Hi guys, it's Tuesday, so it's down and dirty woodcraft. Stay with me. Hi guys. Okay, today we're going to talk about a down and dirty tripod. Now, we're talking about a tripod. It's going to be used for cooking or some other construction. You can use tripods to make raised beds. You can make tripods as stands for hammocks, the bases for tables, all kinds of stuff. But the conservation of woodcraft is what's the job, how much labor do I have to put in it? Now, if this is going to be load-bearing, like I'm going to make it for hanging up a hammock, I want good, substantial size poles, and I'm going to do all the lashing and frapping. But this isn't. This is for a cook pot. My pot's going to be no more than, what, eight or nine pounds if it's full of water? So it doesn't need to be that strong. It just needs to be able to hold the pot up, because this is going to be quick. We're just stopping for a meal. So, to make that easy, I've cut me three uh, about inch diameter inch and a quarter diameter poles now i'm going to just simply take a piece of, of uh, paracord and what i'm going to do is and i carry these paracords like i've talked about all looped up and i call it my bushcraft zip tie because it's so quick to use it's set up in a canadian jam knot so i'll pick the pole that i'm going to put in the middle i'm going to come up here and noticing the way that my knot is going to pull tight, so I'm coming from the stop knot side. I'm going to come out about that far, and I'm going to wrap it around one time of the pole, down about three or four inches from the top. Now, I'm going to put one of my poles to the left, and one of my poles to the right. Just like this. Now, I'm going to hold those in place, grab and pull that Canadian jam knot, and pull it up tight, just like that. Now that that's been accomplished, I'm going to spread the legs of the tripod, just like this, making sure that those legs go out at even space from each other. Once I got it in this position, I pull that Canadian jam knot just a little bit tighter, go around like twice and then I come back and just half hitch it off that's it I'm done this will hold my weight so it's easily going to hold a little pot for a quick and down and dirty cooking this is the way to go that way when I'm ready to leave all I gotta do is release the jam knot throw down the poles and walk off I'm done now for the next step for the next step this is what I'm carrying in my cooking set with my bush pot. Now as you know, Canterbury has become kind of fond of using the long toggle. And I did a video, oh, a couple months ago, where I was talking about I was getting rid of this system and going to a that sliding uh, trammel loop system. This is my old one. And so many people have asked about it. That's the reason I'm going to show it now. Now, all this is is bank line that has been tied, and I'm going to show you how to tie it in just a second, into a series of offset loops like this. And these are going to be used to suspend the pot. On the bottom, I have my toggle, which is just simply um, clove hitched in place. The toggle goes through the bale, and that holds the pot. Now, I come up to one of my posts, I select the knot I want, and I hang it down, like so. Let me back it up just a little bit so you can see this a little easier. Okay, since this is now suspended, you can clearly see these knots. When I want to lift my pot up, let's say to here, I just grab and lift up, open that up, and go across the top to raise my pot. 
take it down, I come up and go back down. Notice I didn't take the top knot off. I leave it, so if I slip, it catches it. If I want to bring my pot completely up out of the way, I just grab the bottom knot, come up, open up, pot's out of the way. If I want to drop it down for a low simmer on low coals, I can go way down. But any way I want to adjust, I just grab the corresponding knot I want to move to, pick up, spread it, and go over my top. That's it. How down and dirty can you get? This thing weighs nothing, and it can ride with the cook pot, or it can ride in my haversack. If I don't want this cross toggle, I could replace it with a pot hook. But let me show you how to tie this right quick. It won't take just a second. Stay with me. Okay. Now what you're going to do is take a length of bank line. How long? However long you want your rope trammel to be, double it. Okay? So if I want it to be four feet long, get eight foot. It's a rough thing. Now this is going to be a long one. I've already tied a knot on my loose end so it doesn't unfray. I'm going to find my center section. I'm going to come out with a big enough loop that I'm going to be able to open up for the top of my tripod. And I'm simply going to go around and tie an overhand knot in it. Like so. Okay. Now to make that spread open loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of evenly taking two, I'm going to pull one up. Just like that. Pinch it with my finger. Come down here and grab. And then take that and do an overhand knot through it just like this pulling that slack to the top now you see when I pull it it's that big loop that's formed out there same thing again I'm gonna come down as far as I want take one side now you can alternate these in this case I'm gonna alternate I'm gonna take the one on the left side last time was right side. I'm gonna pull it up I'm gonna pinch go around and pull everything through that loop. Just like this. Now, holding that loop, I now pull it tight, pulling each individual cord so it bites in. And again, I now have that loop standing off to grab easily to put up on the thing. And that's all we're gonna do all the way down this thing. Pull a piece up, grip it, Loop it. So you can tie this in five minutes. This is one of them quick five minute type crafts that you can do with no troubles. Okay, now when I get to the bottom, wherever I want to be down here at the end, I need a straight piece to hook my toggle or my hook to my pot hook so I'm going to have my last loop and I'm gonna leave about eight or nine ten inches like that and then I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to make a overhand loop I'm gonna do that twice for the stop knot overhand loop just like that and I'm gonna cut off the excess Now, now this is short, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Now we have a rope trammel. See how these loops stand out all by themselves, easy to grab? That and over my old one, it's kind of worn in. But with this loop down here at the bottom, all I'm going to do, improvise. Okay. Now, I've got my stick. What I'm going to do is get right in the middle of it. And I'm simply going to cut a V right quick. Nothing to it. Just a couple of little push cuts, reverse direction, and then push into those cuts. And this will form a groove for my cord to lock into so it doesn't slide up or down. If you fail to do this point and you just simply tie it onto the stick and it's a slick stick or it becomes slick after it's been used a while, and then you go to pick up a pot and you didn't notice that knot got loose and it slide, your food slides off. Ask me how I know. Now, now all I'm going to do since I got that stop knot is I'm going to take it, I'm going to double it back through itself, just like that, see, double in half, 
open up the butterfly wings, pull it into a loop, pass, and that makes a, larky, a locking lark's head, just like that. So now I have my toggle okay, in guys. place. Well, that's it for today. A down and dirty woodscraft project, making a rope trammel and a tripod. A piece of bank line makes the rope trammel and a piece of 550 paracord set up in a Canadian jam knot makes the quick lock for the tripod. So with those two things on the top of my cook pot, that and a kukri or something to chop down, in five minutes I can have a tripod. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.